Um, yeah, talking about well-being, it has long been said that a happy cow is a productive one as well. In the last hundred years, milk-yielding herds have mostly been moved to indoor facilities. This modern housing situation, while sometimes muddy and, well, fragrant to us humans, protects the cows from parasites, precarious weather conditions, free-raging monsters, etc., while also providing the farmers with a better infrastructure to keep tabs on the nutrition, health, and well-being of the herd. Most milk herds receive one to three meals a day at set hours, which translates to three to five act active hours of eating per day. During these feeding times, all the cows access the food together at the same area of the enclosure. While some of the changes made during the transition to indoor housing are beneficial for both cows and humans, we would like to explain how this transition in feeding terms has also put a strain on the cow's well-being and productivity and exhibit a few simple ways to readjust our feeding techniques in accordance with that. Concentrating feeding delivers a prime time to exude dominance for the cow. The competition between them mostly affects the less popular, say, Star Trek loving cows, to portray abnormal feeding behavior. This novel situation in which cows have to eat in enclosures at a crowded setting has also been previously linked to a rise in stress levels among subordinate cows that also display shorter eating times as well as decline in milk production, milk nutrient levels, and a rise of various types of diseases. In a 2017 article, a group of Canadian researchers assessed the effects of varied intensities of competition on the feeding behavior of milk cows in respect to the group as well as its contributing individual members. They created three levels of feeding competition. In the most competitive scenario, the ratio of manger to cows feeding from it was one manger to three cows, and at the most relaxed one, each cow had its own manger to feed from. In the following 10 days, the researchers analyzed the feeding behavior of the cows in each group, quantifying the feeding time, amount, and rate, and additional peripheral well-being characteristics. In a very expected turn of events, the higher the competition for the same food source, the lower the times the cows wanted to spend around it or eating from it at all, especially the lower ranked cows on the, on the social dominance scale. So to per further prove our point, we will use the tested method of presenting you viewers with as many compelling figures we had time to edit in. So in this one, you can see the amount of time the cows spend around the food source. The dark line represents the most competition, and as the color of the line, the line lightens, so does the number of cows eating from the same manger. Trying to make up for the lost feeding times, the cows that were subjected to the most competition, again displayed here by the darkest line in this very persuasive monochrome figure, had increased their feeding rate in comparison to the two other groups. Personally, I was mainly shocked to learn that they can really do anything fast at all, you know? In addition, solely in the most competitive scenario, the cow's behavior was more varied within the group. This seemingly irrelevant and confusing fact is our evidence for a social ranking that inhibits the cows from approaching the food whenever they want to, kind of like all of us and that last cheese stick on the table. You know what I mean. <laughs> Other important changes that were noted in the most competitive group in comparison to the other two are a decrease in milk protein levels as well as a decrease in cow chill time, aka the amount of, e uh, the amount of time each cow spent lying down. So really, the point here is that we can see how a limited access to food inhibits the lower ranked, socially awkward cows from exhibiting their natural feeding inclinations and binds them instead to behave in accordance with their social status. In other studies done by a British group, the researchers attempted to assess subordinate cow motivation to avoid sharing the manger with the dominant one. These cows preferred eating at a safe distance from other cows, even at the price of eating a lower quality food. So what do we have so far? Tight feeding arrangements lead to a modified feeding behavior that includes aggression, less time spent eating, fewer nutrients in milk, sadder cows, and obviously, sadder people. We recommend that you adjust your current farm to allow them more space. A Canadian research from 2013 demonstrated how every increase of 10 centimeters to the cow's feeding space improved the nutrient levels in the milk and reduced somatic cell count in it. There has also been an overflow of different studies on the subject in recent years, testing a variety of spe spatial changes in the cow's world. So no matter which way you choose to do it, the more main point is to increase each cow's feeding space to 90 centimeters at least, or just install feeding stalls that allow for a more defined spatial separation. 